So if we look at my little chart here that I've worked out, these are the various string lengths for whichever of these straight lines we are dealing with. So for line 0, which is that one, the string length is 0 of course, as we're right at the start of it. 1, it's 3.03025. So we'll do that one first. We need to zoom in a bit. Now we'll go. If we can imagine a piece of string attached here, well, it's it's wrapped around, and we're going to unwind it until it forms a right angle with that end of the line. So it'll be virtually coming off the end of this radius at a right angle, and be the length we're going to give it 0 0.03025. 0 so. <clears throat> the way to do that, click your line tool, we'll turn off the snap to grid, might get in the way, find the end of the line, and there's the start of our line. Now, if we tab to the angle, type 90, tab again, that locks that angle to 90, no matter what you do up here, it'll never change to 90. So all we can do now, all we need to do now is type in the length we want, which is 0 0.03025 return. And that's our first piece of string. Right in there is the first point of our involute curve. From there to there. So we can do another one. Line Find the end, tab, 90, tab, Now this one, because we are now on 0, 0, 1, 2 line, we've got two lengths, so it's 2 times 0 0.03. 0.025 return escape now we've got two points on our involute so we keep doing that until we go right round our, our lines here so another one is uh, tab 90 tab 3 times point zero three zero two five. I got another one. Oh, now there's something you've got to worry about. Make sure that the you're measuring the angle from the line we're dealing with rather than the horizontal angle. I'm going to control Z back from that. Right, if you find the angle by highlighting the line first, then moving to that point, you're now measuring from the line itself. So tab to 90 tab and we've got it. So now this line is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 so our length is 4 times 0, 0.03025 0. return
and there is our involute curve at the end of those lines and now for clarity we're going to trim away some of these construction lines so T for trim Now before we continue, there is an intersect point, if you look down here, between the centre, a line drawn from the centre, to an intersect point on the curve. We want to find that intersect point, which on our drawing is on this line, and it intersects the curve as it comes through here. So we put a temporary straight line in there to get an approximation of it. So that crossover is the, the point we want which will eventually give us a point for a line from there to the centre of the circle. So we'll still get the line tool, find the centre of that, we'll go in a bit further there and we're going to take this line the center of the circle. Now because there are 20 teeth on this gear that means there is 18 degrees between each tooth crown which is 9 degrees for each tooth four and a half degrees between the flank and the center line of the tooth. So we need to put that four and a half degree line in from this line. So we'll choose that part of it. So we'll start here and go to our center. And we're getting an angle shown here. Now just to prove that it's angled from the line, if we go up to here and choose the line, go onto the line, it becomes zero degrees. To the horizontal, it is 4.42 degrees. So we know we're measuring to this line. So we want a degree angle of 4.5. So we'll tab to the angle 4.5. Now let's fix that, so we'll click on up, we're finished. So this is the centre of the, denoting the centre of the tooth. So now, we right click on it, and set it as a mirror line, and choose the spline tool. So we're starting right up here, there. Well, we don't need that one. I don't know why I put 15 in, because we don't need that one. We, actually, we don't need these these three at the end. So I'm going to end it there and skip. turn off the mirror line and there's a perfectly formed tooth and that is the end of part two stand by for part three bye for now bye